Recently, NASA has selected four concept studies to be considered for the Discovery Program. Now, these concept studies are basically proposals that could one day lead to a mission that explores our solar system. So in this video, we're going to talk about what the Discovery Program is, what some of the proposals NASA selected are, and when we would actually be able to hear when these missions are selected. So let's talk about that. So let me begin by discussing what the Discovery Program even is. Essentially, it's a program that allows scientists within the industry to propose their own mission ideas to NASA. Now, the concept originally began in 1992 with the Discovery Program when they wanted to make better, faster, cheaper missions. Now, there have been many Discovery Program missions in the past, including GRAIL, Deep Impact, and even the InSight Lander, which is on Mars. But what really makes the Discovery Program unique is the fact that scientists within the industry get to actually choose what the scientific outcomes are. Now, the reason why this is unique is because a lot of the time in NASA, they have these overarching goals, which are great scientific goals. However, they might not align with all fields. For example, one of these goals might be discovering water on Mars. That would be excellent for a planetary scientist that focuses on Mars, but maybe you're interested in Venus. Then you have to wait a few more decades in order for a mission to Venus could even happen. So the Discovery Program is an excellent way in which scientists are able to propose their own missions to get selected for different scientific outcomes that vary from what NASA chooses. Interestingly enough, the Discovery Program missions are generally cheaper than larger scale missions, and they typically refer to one-off missions that try to understand these new ideas in science, which eventually could lead to future missions following up if there's a lot of insight gained. Now, right now, it turns out that the only active Discovery Program mission is the InSight lander on Mars. However, there are a few more coming up in the next few years, including Lucy, Psyche, and Megane. So now that we know what the Discovery Program is, let's go ahead and talk about what these recently proposed missions are. And there are four different ones. Them being Da Vinci Plus, the Io Volcano Explorer, Trident, and Veritas. So let's go ahead and begin with the very first one, being Da Vinci Plus. Da Vinci Plus is actually an acronym for Deep Atmosphere Venus Investigation of Noble Gases, Chemistry, and Imaging Plus. Now, Da Vinci Plus was proposed out of the Goddard Space Flight Center and has a main goal of trying to understand more about Venus's atmosphere as well as the formation of terrestrial planets. Da Vinci Plus is actually a probe that would land on the surface of Venus, but the primary focus of the mission would to take experiments while the spacecraft is flying through the thick atmosphere of Venus. Now, the reason why this is important is because during its descent, it will be able to take atmospheric samples to understand more about Venus's atmosphere and its potential formation. In addition, it will be taking high resolution images of the terrain to try and understand more about the surface of Venus. In past proposals, they've also suggested an orbiter that would stay around for communication relays or other scientific outcomes. So it would be interesting to see if Da Vinci Plus is actually selected, because then we could get more up-to-date or higher resolution images of the surface of Venus like we've never seen before. The second mission is the Io Volcano Explorer, and the name is pretty self-explanatory. Io is one of Jupiter's moons and is actually one of the four Galilean moons, being Jupiter's closest Galilean moon. Now, interestingly enough, the Io Volcano Explorer was actually proposed by the Applied Physics Laboratory. In order to understand what makes the Io Volcano Explorer mission so interesting, we first need to understand the moon Io a little bit more. Since Io is so close to Jupiter, it experiences incredibly high tidal effects, actually called tidal heating. And this is the same tidal effects that we experience here on Earth when high tide and low tide happen because of the orientation of the sun and the moon. So interestingly enough, the same thing is happening at Jupiter, except Io is close enough to Jupiter that it experiences 20,000 times the tidal force that Earth experiences due to the moon. Now, 20,000 times the force is pretty drastic because here on Earth, the moon shapes our oceans, which is interesting, but Jupiter actually changes the shape of the entire moon by 100 meters every single orbit, 
meaning that depending on where Io is in its orbit around Jupiter, could change the entire shape by nearly a 10-story tall building, which is pretty phenomenal. Now, all this tidal heating actually makes the moon itself pretty active volcanically. In fact, it's thought to be the most active volcanic object in our entire solar system, which is why the name Io Volcano Explorer, because it's essentially going to try and understand more about Io and what volcanic activity is actually happening on the surface to give more insight into what's going on between this Galilean moon and Jupiter. Now, the third proposed mission is called Trident, and you can probably guess where that's going to. It's going to Neptune's moon Triton. Now, Triton is really interesting because it was only ever explored in Voyager's 2 flyby of Neptune nearly three decades ago. Now, the reason why Triton is so interesting is due to the fact that, first of all, we've only been able to map 40% of the surface. Therefore, there's still a 60% that we've never really seen other than telescopes here on Earth. And even further, there's thought to be a liquid ocean underneath the nitrogen ice surface. Therefore, there's a lot we don't know about Triton. So essentially, Trident is trying to perform another flyby of Triton. First of all, to try and map more of the surface of Triton, to get higher resolution images of not only the moon, but also Neptune itself, since we haven't been there in a while, as I mentioned. To go even further, Trident is actually being proposed by JPL. And the main idea is to understand more about the moon, what is going on in the outer edges of our solar system, or closer to the edges of the planets, because the solar system goes a lot further, and also understanding more about if these subsurface oceans can actually exist in moons in this region of space. I know these are a lot of strange concepts to try and imagine, but this is just due to the part that we haven't really been out there that many times. Therefore, if we could send more missions to the outer planets, that will give us a lot more information regarding what all is actually going on out there. The fourth and last proposal is VERITAS, which is an acronym that stands for Venus, Emissivity, Radio Science, INSAR, Topography, and Spectroscopy. Now, VERITAS is actually proposed by JPL, and the main goal is to understand more about the geology and potential formation of the planet Venus. Now, the main idea for VERITAS is it's going to enter orbit around Venus and never go to the surface, so it's just an orbiter. But it's going to try and use radar technology to get a very accurate representation of the surface of Venus. But why is that important? In the past, we have been able to understand the terrain of Venus a little bit, but not to the accuracy that Veritas wants to be able to achieve. They want to be able to understand this to a very high accuracy, so accurate that they would actually be able to detect if there are tectonic plate movements or to try and understand more of the geologic structure that's on the surface of Venus. So that's very accurate. Even then, they can get higher resolution images, but that might not be too insightful due to the thicker atmosphere at Venus. Another interesting aspect about the Veritas mission is that it's going to try and understand the surface of Venus by analyzing the infrared spectrum, something that's never been done before around Venus. And the reason why this is important is because we still know very little about the surface of Venus. Again, we might have mapped it in the past, but what is it actually made up of and how is it changing over time? These are very important questions to understanding the formation of Venus and what makes it so different from our home planet here on Earth. Now, interestingly enough, both Da Vinci Plus and Veritas are trying to answer some of the same questions about the formation of Venus. However, they're going in two very different approaches. So it'll be interesting to see which proposal NASA actually selects. All of these missions sound truly amazing, and I personally would love to see each one of them happen. However, NASA can only select up to two of them. So in the next year or so, we should be able to hear back from NASA about which one is actually selected and more information around the mission that they chose, which should be rather interesting because we'll be able to get excited about wherever we end up going, whether it be Io, Venus, or Triton. So all those destinations are incredibly interesting. But I want to hear your opinion now. Which mission would you choose if you were NASA? Would you choose a mission to Venus, going out to Io, or maybe even Triton? Let me know in the comments below. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.